An all-new Eye on the Bay starts now in HD. We're off for an adventure around the lake. And if you want to take a dip yourself, you can. In this celebrity's pool. And we'll explore a century-old store. Plus, we will eat, eat, and eat. Good for you. You do get emotional about this food thing. <laughs> <laughs> New York, gotta get away for the day guide. Your let's try a new place to eat guide. Even your hey, it really happened here guide. We're the tour guide with you in mind. Eye on the Bay. Welcome to Eye on the Bay. I'm Brian Hackney, and if I've got my car and I've got my dog, it can only mean one thing. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for a day trip, and this day trip is to Geyserville. An easy drive 74 miles north of the Golden Gate Bridge on Highway 101, just past Healdsburg, the small town of Geyserville rests among the vineyards. We arrive, almost before we know it, in downtown Geyserville by we, I mean me, and my dog Flossie. Say hello to Flossie. I'm <laughs> sorry about that. She loves those sudden stops. Um, yeah, it's hard to miss downtown, by the way, because it's only two blocks long. It was founded more than 160 years ago when they discovered geysers and steam vents in the hills east of town. And we no sooner arrived here before our name was Mud. Geyserville Mud. Sounds like a sauna, and in fact, there is steam inside, the steam from a freshly brewed cup of coffee. Great place to stop after you make the trip up here, and soak up the ambiance, too, because this building is over 100 years old. And that's the great thing about downtown Geyserville. I mean, it feels like it's been locked in time, but it's also kept up with the times, the wine times. I mean, look at the crossroads right up there. Vineyards in every direction, and no wonder because Geyserville Avenue kind of splits Dry Creek Valley on one side, Alexander Valley on the other, so it's a great place to come for wine tasting and do it in a vintage atmosphere, enjoy a cup of coffee, and enjoy a really good roll. And speaking of the vintage atmosphere, right down the road, that's the name that's on the building. Every single day we have people come into our shop and say it's one of the best collectives they've been in, and they're from all over the world. It all began with a pink stove. It all began with this pink stove. We, my husband and I were having breakfast at a restaurant in Healdsburg, and the owner there had this pink stove. I said, it's adorable. And she said, I'm getting rid of it. Do you want it? But it started Geyserville Vintage. It did. From that? From that. In 2009, Constance opened Geyserville Vintage, a gift collective offering 1,500 square feet of old and new items for sale. Oh, well, one of our vendors does vintage lingerie, and she happens to be a costumer for Beach Blanket Babylon and also for Berkeley Repertory Theater. And so some of this stuff has been in some of the plays? Or? Yeah, yeah, and she finds her pieces all over. And the man cave, what did you say was that? Our man cave has mantiques in it, uh -huh. and it serves its purpose in many ways. Absolutely, sometimes a man will walk in and it's like a vortex, they're sucked right <laughs> into it. Another thing that's very appealing, we're one of the top seven bicycling areas in the country. And so, along with Geyserville Vintage, we have Alexander Valley Bike Company, so people come up, rent bikes. And who runs the in-house bike rentals? Well, Constance's husband, Doug, of course. I just kind of turned a hobby into a, a business, which was uh, bike repair and bike rentals. Geyserville and, and Sonoma County, basically, are known for worldwide cycling. The uh, professional teams come over here to Sonoma County and train, and they come right through town and up to the geysers. and Between the one-stop shopping and the hybrid bikes, the husband and wife duo have got you covered. So see, there are vintage items in this town, and there's also, in a way, vintage food. Because when you come to this restaurant, really, the whole food business runs in their veins. The Catellis, after all, have been here for three generations. You cook for a lot of locals, obviously. Your family has for decades. Yes. You've also cooked for Lady Gaga, is that right? <laughs> uh, yes, I've had the opportunity to cook for a lot of uh, much more high profile people as well. Domenica Catelli has also judged on Iron Chef and brother Nicholas worked with celebrity chef Guy Fieri. But the siblings' greatest claim to fame? 
their family's namesake restaurant in the heart of Geyserville that their grandparents opened in the 1930s. It, yeah, it was and a bar food. originally and food, and it was mostly like, you know, grandma cooking, nanny cooking for people yeah. that came in. Your nanny being your grandmother, nanny by the way. Just to yeah. yeah. translate yes, for, from the original. For anyone that doesn't know what a nanny is. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right. Yes. So the food is a combination of three generations. So it was my grandmother's recipes and father's and my own. And that was a bit challenging because no one in our family ever wrote anything down. But this, this town had a memory of certain things that we needed to bring back. So one of the dishes we're really known for is our 10-layer lasagna. Those are paper-thin layers of pasta. It's really Really surprisingly light because I have the Italian theory you have to be able to read the newspaper through your pasta, which we can't. So you could take that sheet, read the newspaper, and then we layer it up. And then one of our other things that people have come all over for is our meatball sliders because those were on diners, drive ins, and dives. So okay. that's our house made sausage, um, organic local beef, and then our mixture of our, all of our little special ingredients on okay. little buns. What makes you guys really feel like you've accomplished your mission? When the place is filled with generations of people that we grew up with, so Lou Colombano, who's 96 years old and was a bartender here when he was 19. The community-driven aspect of everybody that used to remember Catelli's, whether they were from, you know, Marin County up to, you know, Ukiah, Mendocino County area that drove through here because of the 101 being here, um, coming in and being like, my grandparents used to stop and eat here, and they used to tell me stories about this, and now I'm eating here. And Catelli's is still the heartbeat of this town, definitely worth a lunch or dinner stop while in the area. Well, I have to say that it's doing it between brother and sister and having experience on that battleground myself. <laughs> <laughs> what a great accomplishment. Congratulations, Thank you guys. Thank what a pleasure you. meeting you. Oh, Domenica, pleasure thanks you so too. much. Thank Nicholas, you. congratulations. Thank you. All right, the food is great, and the wine cannot be far behind. In fact, Geyserville is becoming more and more famous for its wines. Of course, there's wine tasting rooms, many of them housed in historic structures, but one of them has an automotive connection. Now, what are you pouring? I'm pouring um, my Route 128 Syrah. My? My. You own the vineyard? Well, actually, um, technically, my husband, Pete, and I oh. do. <laughs> oh, that guy, I have to include Pete. This is a husband and wife operation. <laughs> it is. It is. The main street through town is Route 128, or Highway 128. Yeah, and that's the vineyard. And that's our vineyard. We've got about eight acres in production right now. And do you have teams of workers coming in to do nope. the... Who runs it? We do it ourselves. Tell me about the building where your wine tasting room is. Well, the building, uh, Lampson Center, it uh, was California's 10th Ford dealership. It's got quite the history behind it. In fact, right over here, they've got a picture of this when it was a Ford dealership back in 1949. The showroom windows and all those gleaming Fords on display. This was the parts department. <laughs> and. Uh, Back in the day, Pete was actually coming here, uh, buying parts right here uh, for tractors and trucks. And, Isn't uh, life funny? Sure. This is really great. Thank you so much for having us. In a moment, we're going to be exploring the lake. We'll be talking about that as I and the Bay's day trip to Geyserville continues after a break. Welcome back to Eye in the Bay as we continue on our day trip to, how did you know, Geyserville. I'm Brian Hackney. We're about uh, an hour and a half north of San Francisco. We have already stopped for coffee. We've already been fed by the chef who's also cooked for Oprah and Lady Gaga, had a little tipple of wine. Now, my next stop was going to be the River Rock Casino perched up on the hill. But on a sunny day like this, I couldn't pass up a cruise around the lake. Lake Sonoma is a 10 minute drive from downtown Geyserville. With 5,000 acres of water plus a marina splashing the day away is easy. Just above the lake, archery is a great alternative if you're looking to stay dry. And the nice thing about this range is open to everyone. It's open to the public. We invite the public to come enjoy our range along with us. Around the lake, hiking, horseback riding, and biking will keep you busy with 47 miles of trails to discover. Oh, it's amazing. So you can get some really big loops and not see anybody for hours. 
The Lake Solitude is perfect for most, but if you're after history, downtown Geyserville's charm is rooted thanks to generations cherishing the town's past. Back on Main Street, and there's nobody better than Harry Bosworth of the aptly named Bosworth and Son and Grandson and Great Grandson. How long has this actually been a store? It's been a store since 1911 when my grandfather and father started. And what was your grandfather selling? He sold dry goods and groceries. Wow. In this side and had dead bodies on the other side. So. <laughs> wow. You have to diversify. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Probably couldn't do that today. <laughs> um, and then through the years, how did the store evolve? They put chicken feed and animal feeds, and they finally got rid of the groceries because there were too many grocery stores in town. And so they settled on menswear and, and ranchwear and that sort of thing. Yeah, and then I added my own little mix to it. Oh, you're still here? Yeah, I'm just a mom and pop. It is great, because this does remind me of the hardware store of my childhood. Uh, you know, this is the kind of story they don't make anymore. No, there aren't very many around, and if we've tried to keep it pretty much the same. Indeed, a historic footprint is present, but today the town's hillside addition is what's causing a buzz. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my winery. Actually, it's Francis Ford Coppola's winery. What I love about this place is that it's not something you come to just to do wine tasting. In fact, when you come here, bring your bathing suit. And here's why. This stunning pool that opened when the property opened back in 2010. And if you want to take a dip yourself, you can. It's kind of first come, first serve, or you can make reservations while the pool is available in the summertime. This is all the brainchild, of course, of the man who wrote the screenplay for Patton, and for the godfather, Francis Ford Coppola. And he has many of his creative grandchildren right over there. Five decades of Coppola filmmaking are memorialized in this movie gallery. Free to the public, this is a hidden gem where Coppola fans can buff up on key movie moments, including those from the godfather. I trust these men of my life, so One of the things the film was famous for were these scenes of these sumptuous feasts. Tables piled high with food, people enjoying themselves, wine, pasta, everything in one place, and people having a great time. It's the same sort of thing they do here every Tuesday night. Oh, come on, ladies, don't be shy. Get a piece of pizza. You're not going home hungry tonight. The restaurant neighbors the gallery, and it's here the Tuesday night dining experience known as a tabula tempts guests with an assortment of delicacies gracing the table. An Italian play on dim sum, this is a hearty way to cap off your visit to the Coppola compound. Stay with us, there's one more grand feast with a she-devil, and a cozy spot to stay when our day trip to Geyserville continues into the night. Welcome back to Eye on the Bay as we wrap up our day trip to Geyserville. And even though only about 800 people live in this tiny town, you would think you're in the middle of a metropolitan area, at least judging by the restaurants. Because let me tell you, Diavola is one of the best. And what does that mean in Italian? Diavola has a few meanings, uh, she-devil, uh, spicy, you know. So hot, spicy. Fire, you know. Fiery, okay, that kind of thing. Tell me about the dishes that you made for us, beginning with, what's this? Uh, so we did a wild mushroom uh, mezzaluna. That was filled with local porcini, chanterelles, just a simple butter sauce with cipollini onions. We do all our own house-cured meat here, so I did a copa salad, which is a pork shoulder. A little bit of gorgonzola, toasted uh, almonds, dates, and a little uh, local arugula. Okay. And this? Uh, and this is what we do here. So every day we do a lot of butchering. This is my rabbit terrine. We also did malagato, which is a blood sausage. Our house cured prosciutto, calabrese, spicy southern Italian salami, yeah. and uh, chuscolo, which is from Le Marche, so a soft salami. And then finally, our fresh pasta here, uh, we did a tagliatelle with uh, pork cheek ragu. 
Yeah, I mean, for me, Geyserville is a destination spot, and I, mean, I love living here, and it makes me happy to see people come and yeah. you know, enjoy the food and what we do, what we're passionate about. Well, you make good food, I think people, they definitely seek it out, so. Yeah. Where, where did you learn how to do this? I moved to Italy when I was about 18, and I met my beautiful wife there, and she said, if you want to live in America, we're moving to Sonoma County, and here we are. So a woman is behind all this. You know, if it wasn't for her. In Italy, you know, I mean, it's like... Italy's great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm, are you Italian? I'm Italian. Yeah. I'm Italian. Yeah. All right. All right. Good to hear. <laughs> Your wife right. is not a she-devil, though, is it? No, she's no. not. No. <laughs> and at the end of it all, wouldn't that be a nice place to turn your day trip into an overnight trip? That's the Hope Merrill House. And Ron and Cosette run not just this, but the B&B that's kitty corner to it over there at the Hope Bosworth House. The B&Bs boast 12 rooms, breakfast included. And just like that, it'll wrap up our trip to Geyserville. If you want more information about anything you've seen during the course of the show, log on to our website, cbssf.com slash eye in the bay. You ready to go for a walk? You, Flossie, wanna go? Let's go. See you next time. <laughs> <laughs>